Hey, how's it going? I just want to make this video as a follow-up to the last video because it doesn't seem like it sat very well with a few different people. And I get it, yeah, I, I it was a slight hot take on the whole tuning situation. And I want to kind of clarify that just a little bit, like why I have this mm, notion to feel that way about tuners. It's because I, have never had a great experience with remote tuning. And any of the remote tuners, I don't care how good they are. I just, I, I'm not happy with the process. PD tuning offers services where you can basically like book them in real time. They do remote tuning, but like in real time, you go, you know, rent a dyno somewhere and you know, do your pulls that way and make adjustments. But even then it's uh, the, the whole remote tuning just, it, it left an unsavory taste in my mouth after the SHO, like going through the whole process of the SHO, going through gearhead tuning, like the first tune I bought from them was great. And actually was the one that worked the best on that car, but I ended up paying for a whole extra tune to run ethanol blend. And that tune never ran right. And the car never ran right the same after that tune. So, you know, every time I try to get in touch with Matt, who was the main tuner there for their stuff, you know, it was always, you know, something's with your car. Just check your car. You know, I replaced the knock sensors. I did this, I did that, and nothing ever changed. The only thing that changed, the only thing that ever made the car run better was going from that second tune back to the first tune and the car ran fine. It still wasn't as good as it once was, but it was actually the only time it ran halfway decent. And actually some of the fastest runs that I've gotten with that car were with the regular 93 tune they wrote for me with some E85 added to the tank rather than the specific ethanol tune they wrote for that car. So, you know, it was downhill from there. I've had a couple small conversations with other tuners and that's when I thought maybe, you know, maybe I'll get with this guy here, Ryan. And I, you know, I'm not saying he's a bad dude. I ain't saying that at all. And I ain't saying he don't know what he's talking about. However, just from my brief conversation with him, to me, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be worth the money because it's just, I don't think I'm gonna get what I want out of it with the amount of money that I would be paying to do it, if that makes any sense. So the update to that is, I've decided that I'm just gonna do it myself. A couple of the guys here in the comments really encouraging me to do this myself. I mean, kind of like a DIY channel anyway. I've pieced together that engine, or took that one out, I mean, and put that one in and whatnot all by myself with my bare two hands. The other one's holding the GoPro, so yeah. Um, people who are reaching out like, yeah, do it yourself. You don't need them. I'm like, yeah, I don't need them. Do it myself. This is DIY. This is what we do. So he kind of like, this is what got me going. Like, I'm gonna do this myself. I'm gonna tune this car myself and prove you don't need to spend all that money with another tuner and anyone can do it. So <laughs> it's kind of like where I'm at with this. Eventually, when I get the money together, I'm not sure what device I'm going with, but it seems like a lot of the DIY guys go with the HP tuners. I've always heard good thing about HP tuners. It just seems like for the EcoBoost, everyone's stuck with the Cobb access port. Maybe the Cobb access port's better for just flashing the car, you know, if someone else is doing the tuning. It seems like the HP tuners is the way to go if you are gonna do it yourself, so. That's where I'm leaning. I don't know much about the HP Tuner software. I'm gonna have to get familiar with it. Talking to you right now in this video, I don't know much about it. Like I don't know how in depth the software is. You know, we'll see. Like I have, I've gotten a crash course with tuning when I installed the micro squirt on the uh, two, three Fox body. And I literally had to figure out how to write a base map just to get that dang car working. You know, I had to kind of quickly learn how to read, write, and understand VE tables and how to adjust each cell and what the load cells mean. Like I am an expert by any means, but I had a very quick crash course with that. And I did end up writing a base tune for that car by scratch, just by referencing videos and information online and got the car running. Did it run well? No. Did it run? Yes. It's a learning process, because tuning it's, it can be complicated. It's not super simple, but it's nothing 
anyone can't learn. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. If I'm able to make adjustments like that, then great. So I wanted to do it that way. I've read some of the comments. Trust me, I read your guys' comments because I was upset over the fact that the answer I got about tuning it with the cams was recommendation. To me, a recommendation doesn't mean much. The thing is, I asked a direct question. Does my car need a tune with cams? It really could have been a yes or no, but I got the recommendation. And so, you know, people were like, he can't just say yes or no. He can only say that legally. You know, like, fine, if that be the case, whatever. I still don't want to have to deal with that. I don't want to be playing with my money. I'm going to these guys because my assumption is that they're the experts. They're the professionals that I'm gonna reach out to for advice. You know, like, do you reach out to a doctor just for a recommendation? You know, like, hey, I've had this chest pain really bad for a while. Oh yeah, maybe I, I recommend you, you go see a specialist. No, they're gonna be like, no, we're gonna go see a cardiologist. You know, what about, uh, you know, what about you're doing your taxes? You know, you call a tax place. You're gonna ask questions about taxes. You know, what if you asked about, yeah, I forgot to pay taxes last year. They're gonna be like, how about you come in and we'll help you out? Because they're like, oh yeah, we recommend you paid your taxes. <laughs> like, what? That's what, but see, that's what I'm saying is, that's kind of how I feel. Like, okay, you know, if they're just gonna say a recommendation due to legal reasons, then, you know, like that's, I'm going to them because I want and I'm seeking their professional advice. If they can't give it to me, especially unless I pay them, like if they're not gonna give it to me just by simple conversations, then I'm not spending my money with them. You know, like I just wanna make this clear because it, I did kind of come off a little, you know, a little aggressive in that video and I get it, but it's just because I'm so tired of it all. <laughs> like I'm tired of playing games. We're all adults. We're spending a lot of money to enjoy these cars and I'm just tired of playing games with these other people. So, you know, just kind of take it with a grain of salt, but that's just kind of where I'm at with everything and you know, what I'm planning to do with tuning going forward, which I think would be nice to, um, to do on the channel. Be cool. We'll all learn something. So. Uh, but as far as the car goes now, I've gotten it better. I haven't gotten it great. I've made a few more adjustments on the wastegate arm. Right now, the car is kind of like peaking, spiking like 18, 19, I think. I haven't logged it. It's kind of like looking on the gauge. It gets up there and it pulls pretty decent at that boost level. Fueling looked great just from monitoring the uh, X4, not actually logging, but just like looking at all the PIDs for the information. And yeah, so, and I, I don't hear detonation at 18 PSI. So, you know, I could probably adjust the arm a little bit more. We could probably get a little bit more um, boost. It just seems like anything above 24 was going to be a problem which leads to another thing that I thought was very interesting that someone chimed in. Uh, the comments in the last video was, there is actually another huge, huge problem with the EcoBoost engines. And it could be a good reason why they blow up all the time, especially when you start pushing them. I don't know if this particular setup will be affected, but it's possible. So someone chimed in saying that, you know, there's a problem with the, especially with the smaller turbos, where you basically have too much back pressure. Obviously back pressure is not good. You don't want back pressure because it can just rob horsepower. There's more to it than just that, which is what I've never really thought about. The problem is if you have too much back pressure on the exhaust side of the turbo, with these engines, what happens, not like it just happens with these engines, it can happen to any engine, but it is problematic with the EcoBoost because of the way they're set up. The smaller turbos, the built-in um, head of fold, integrated manifold. The way these are set up, they're affected a lot more. So basically what happens is if there's too much back pressure over here, there is a thing that call, is called exhaust reversion, which basically the exhaust gets kind of trapped right here, right here in this part, in this part before the exhaust wheel of the turbo, and it's just sitting in there. And the problem is when these intake valves open back up, there's a little bit of that overlap, especially now with these cams, I'm sure there is more overlap than there was with this, the regular RS cams. So guess what happens? When that piston's coming down and that exhaust valve is still open and there's still kind of a bit of pressure left in the space here because the exhaust hasn't been able to get past that wheel, that the exhaust wheel, that hot exhaust gas gets sucked 
back into the same cylinder on the intake stroke. And so now you have hot air mixing in with the fresh air. That happens a couple times. That's gonna superheat that cylinder and cause detonation. That's basically what happens. And I didn't even realize that. And it makes a lot of sense because it generally affects the middle two cylinders. So basically when you're pushing these smaller turbos, you have to make sure that your exhaust back pressure is not too high. Like if you're not familiar with it, like I'm kind of not until just now because I'm starting to learn about it more and reading about it more. Like everything, there's a ratio and there's a preferred ratio that you want it to be basically one to one. You want your exhaust pr back pressure to be as equal to or less preferably than your intake pressure. So if you're pushing 22 pounds of boost through this end of the engine, you want 22 pounds or less coming out this side of the engine because what you don't want is 22 over here, 25, 26 over here because that's when you're gonna have problems with that exhaust reversion. So learning about that, now I can take that knowledge and go forward with this and make some very educated and thoughtful decisions moving forward on how to, oh, excuse me, extract the power efficiently and reliably out of this new engine. Because I wasn't planning to replace this turbo and I still don't know if I have to. I don't know if this turbo will get me to 500 wheel horsepower and not create a back pressure issue. The cool thing is, since I don't know what this turbo is capable of, I know what it's capable of in terms of boost. I don't know what it's capable of in terms of restriction, how much of a restriction it is. There's some really interesting like ways you can test your back pressure and there's some cool like um, backyard mechanics type stuff that we can do to test the back pressure on that turbo. So that's what I'm planning to do. Um, actually, I'm waiting for the holidays to pass, taking a nice long trip back up to Maryland for the holidays and then we'll be back down. But I gotta wait until then because I don't want to screw everything up and then goof up that trip. Because at least I know now the car's running. That's why I'm waiting. But when I do come back, I want to go ahead and experiment with trying to figure out what the back pressure is on this turbo. I actually have to probably remove it again from the car, which is fine. It shouldn't be that big of a deal now that I've had it all apart. Because I have to take it apart again and modify the uh, exhaust part of it. Basically, it's going to have to tap a fitting into it so we can hook a line to it and test back pressure. We can collect data and see if this turbo will be a restriction. Like, what is the restriction? Like, how much boost can this turbo push without having back pressure? You know, like, was the detonation I'm getting at 25, 26 due to back pressure? Or is it due to just being lean? Um, you know, so... We'll be able to see all that. I would love to be able to log all that information and I think it'd be a fun little project. So yeah, that's kind of like where I'm at with all this. So we're gonna just kind of start getting a lot of information and data and just, you know, do it ourselves, do it myself. Tune this car the way I want it tuned. And we'll not only gain our power doing it, we're gonna gain knowledge and knowledge is power. So <laughs> a little cliche, but you get what I'm saying. So that makes me excited and it's all thanks to you guys who, you know, constantly post in the comments of my videos and it's encouraging. You're encouraging me to take this on and do it myself. And that's what we're going to do. So you definitely got to keep a lookout for that video. Not sure when it's going to happen, but like I said, it's going to be after the holidays sometime, maybe in January or so. But with that said, I think that's going to finally wrap it up here for this video. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share with everyone you know if you want to see more content like this and you haven't already. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for next Cars Creative video.